videos. Hopefully you enjoyed that intro I put up for you guys earlier. By now many of you are going, what the hell was all of that? Many of you say this guy's really good with his hands, or many of you might say this guy has no life. Well, me being a chemistry student, I kinda gave my life away a long time ago, and all of that crazy card handling is just an art form of magic. Anyways, when Dr. Ford introduced the project to us, the first thing that came to my mind was, hey, it would be pretty cool if I could research on a chemical compound that is actually used to make playing cards. And as I did my work and research, I came across a chemical compound known as cellulose acetate. It's pretty popular in the industry. It's not one of the top 100 chemical compounds, but it is used for a lot of other things. We'll get to that later. But first, let's start with the structure and synthesis of the compound. Cellulose acetate is a rather complex molecule. Now, it is consisted of chains of repeating glucose units with the formula C6H7O2OH3. Now, to make things simpler, we would first need to look at the structure of cellulose itself, which is an organic compound that is the structural component of the cell wall in green plants. The hydrogens contained in the hydroxyl groups of cellulose are actually replaced by acetyl groups through a process called acetylation in order to obtain cellulose acetate. Now, AC is just the abbreviated form of acetyl groups. There are several ways of synthesizing this compound, but we'll just look at the most generic one. First, cellulose is treated with acidic acid and acidic anhydride in the presence of catalysts such as sulfuric acid. Through partial hydrolysis, the sulfate is removed to obtain the desired properties in the final product. Once the final product has been yielded, it is dissolved in acetone for extrusion through spinnerets. As the solvent is evaporated and dried, fine fibers of cellulose acetate can be obtained. Now, if you take a look at the step-by-step -step process, cellulose is treated with acidic anhydride and acidic acid in the presence of the catalyst in order to obtain the intermediate, which then goes through hydrolysis to yield the final product cellulose acetate. If you notice, you can see the hydrogens of the hydroxyl groups have already been replaced with acetyl groups. Now, let's get a bit into the history of the product. In 1865, French chemist Paul Schusenberger discovered that cellulose could react with acidic anhydride to form cellulose acetate. British chemist George Miles in 1904 discovered that hydrolyzed cellulose acetate is soluble in acetone in order to yield a less highly acetylated compound. Now, the full exploitation on a commercial scale was accomplished by two Swiss brothers, Henry and Camille Dreyfus. This chemical compound has many industrial uses. First of all, the fibers are used for making apparel such as buttons, sunglasses, linings, blouses, dresses, wedding and party attires. It's also used in to create cigarette filters, ink reservoir and fiber tip pens, and of course, playing cards. Let's take a look at a few of the characteristics of the fiber. It is easily bonded with plasticizers. It is soluble in many common organic solvents such as acetone. The hydrophilic characteristics of the fiber is good for textile applications. It is made from renewable resource as the wood pulp. It is resistant to mold and it can be washed or dry cleaned and it generally will not shrink. And I'm back in front of the camera again. Ain't that exciting? Anyways, I want to thank all of you guys for watching my presentation. I want to thank Dr. Ford for giving us the opportunity to work on a chemical compound of our own interest. Now, me being a card magician, it was kind of like a no-brainer for me to do my research on what playing cards are made of. And I came across this very intriguing chemical compound known as cellulose acetate. I got to learn the structure, the synthesis, and a whole lot of chemistry behind it. I hope you guys got to learn a few things here and there. Um, if you want to learn about other organic or industrial compounds, I suggest pick up this book, Industrial Organic Chemicals by Wyckoff. I told you I have no life. That being said, I just want to wish you guys all good luck, and until next time, adios.